I'd like you to open your Bibles with me now to the book of Philippians chapter 2. And we're going to read beginning verse number 5 to 8. That's okay. Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 to 8. It says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, once again, we thank you, Lord, for the time you've given to us. I pray now that you would bless the preaching of your word this evening, that your name will be magnified and be glorified, and that the history of what Christ has done, Lord, will be very, very clear to us through your word. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Tonight, <clears throat> I'm going to to give you a, a series of messages on the death, the burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, this will be a long message that I'd like you to look at this and uh, uh, be with me here as we make a study. First of all, I'll be talking about the chronology of events surrounding the death, the burial, and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, many of you know this, but for the benefit of our new believers and some others perhaps who have forgotten what our stand is concerning the chronology of events, I'd like to just look into the scriptures. You know, what is hard is when you begin to search the scriptures and you begin to connect all the dots. Now, uh, I always say that preachers and pastors are not to interpret the scriptures. We are not interpreters. We are declarers of the scriptures. It is the scripture that will interpret itself. All right? So right now, we are going to go to a lot of Bible verses. A lot. To be able to connect all the dots on the chronology of events surrounding the death the burial and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, it's just like uh, the study of physics or calculus in which you're given a formula. Not every, not every figure is there. But there's a lot of things that are given. Maybe one or two are not given. And in physics and in calculus or uh, algebra, you call it X, isn't it? So by being able to find out what the X is, you actually get all of what is given. Here, we are going to see what is given. So we'll have the complete view a complete view, all right? It's just like sitting down in a classroom to be able to study the complete view of the chronology of events surrounding the death, the burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. But before that, I'd like to go to our text where it says in verse number 7 of Philippians chapter 2, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the former servant 
and was made in the likeness of men. I'd like you to look into those uh, words. For of a servant and made in the likeness of men. And then it says in verse number 8, and being found in fashion as a man. But the question is, did Christ really suffer like a man? Yes, he did. He experienced all forms of suffering as man would experience. He experienced the pain. He experienced the torture. He experienced the brutal torturings of the Romans to his own body. Naranasan niya yan lahat, okay? I mean, hindi siya nagsuffer bilang Diyos. Siya ay nagsuffer bilang totoong tao. All right? So, he experienced the kind of sufferings like, like we would undergo any kind of suffering. He experienced all the pain. That's why it says here, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Now, let's go to the uh, chronology events tonight. Ang tanong ni ito, kailan ba namatay ang ating Panginoon? Roman Catholic Church teaches that Jesus Christ died on Friday. Ang Roman Catholic ay naniniwala na si Kristo ay namatay ng Piernes. Now, simple logic. Tatlong araw, Piernes, Sabado, Linggo. Tatlong araw, hindi ba? Oo. Pero, yan ba ay simple lamang na mathematical figure na tatlong araw. Ano ba ang sinasabi ng scriptures? Alright? Ang ibang mga protestante at evangelical ay naiiniwala na si Kristo ay namatay ng Thursday, ng Webes. And they have their own explanation of that. Pero ano ang paiiniwala natin bilang mga fundamental Baptists? We, as fundamental Biblical Baptists believe that Christ died on Wednesday. Ang ating Panginoon ay namatay ng Wednesday. Alright? Ng Merkules. Paano ba ito? So, kinakailangan ating makita sa Biblia kung bakit ang Panginoon ay namatay ng Wednesday. Well, magsimula tayo, magsimula tayo ng six days before the Passover. Okay? So, itong simulan natin. Ating makikita ang X dito. Alright? Number one, let's start with Friday. Friday, six days before the Passover. And that is in the Hebrew, Nisan. Nine, Nisan. Nisan is the Hebrew word for uh, April. For April. Okay? So it was April 9 before the Passover. Six days before the Passover, Jesus went to Bethany. All right. Do natin simulan, ha? Friday. Oo. Six days bago ang Passover. Ano yung Passover? Mamaya, makikita nyo kung ano yung Passover. The Passover is a special event of the Jews. And it is done on a Sabbath. But it is not done on a regular Sabbath. It is done on a high Sabbath. Okay. Pag sinabing high Sabbath, hindi nangangahulugan, yan ay Saturday. At that time, it was Thursday. So, it was six days before the high Sabbath, which was what? Thursday. In John 12.1, then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany. So, kung babalik ka from the high Sabbath, which was Thursday, yun ang given eh. Okay? Kung babalik ka, you will find, you'll be able to find the X. 
All right? And that would be Friday. Yun ang ating simula. Friday. Friday, the Lord Jesus Christ was in Bethany. Okay. Now, then secondly, the next is of course Saturday. And that is 10 Nisan, April 10, which is the regular Sabbath. In that regular Sabbath, Jesus entered Jerusalem. It was the first time that Christ entered Jerusalem. He never entered Jerusalem before. That was the only time that he entered Jerusalem. All right? And we find that in John chapter 12, verses 12 to 19, and also in the, in the book of Mark 11, verses 1 to 11. All right. Now let's read John chapter 12, verse 12. On the next day. Just take note, no? On the next day. Magkikita niyo yung mga dates. Yung mga days, di ba? Doon sa John 12, 1, Jesus, six days before the Passover. Dito sa John 12, verse 12, on the next day. Ano yung next day after Friday? Of course, it is Saturday. Okay. The Lord Jesus Christ entered Jerusalem. Yan ang tinatawag na Roman Catholic Church na Pam Sunday nila. Okay. Naginawa nung linggo. Okay. Dito, sa pagkakatong ito, it was a Saturday when Jesus entered Jerusalem. Wala na akong panahon pa para basahin ang scriptures tungkol dyan. Inyo na lamang ilista ang mga scriptures and you can study it on your own. Okay. Then, thirdly, we have Sunday. April 11. 11 Nisan. Take note now that Sunday, which is what? The first day of the week. In Mark 11, verses 12 to 19. And on the morrow, please take note, and on the morrow, and that is Sunday, what did the Lord Jesus Christ do? Jesus was walking. He cursed the fig tree and cleansed the temple. He cursed the fig tree and cleansed the temple. All right. That is in Mark 11, verses 12 to 19. Now, in Mark 11 and verse number 20, huh? Mark 11 and verse number 20, it says, And in the morning, now what's that day? That's Monday. And in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. You can also read Mark 13, 1 to 11. Mark 13, 1 to 11. Ano ang ginawa ng Panginoon dyan? Monday, April 12. Jesus delivered the Olivet Discourse. Ibig sabihin, He was in Mount of Olives and there He talked with His own apostles. He went back to Bethany. He stayed at the house of Simon the leper anointed by Mary, and what? Accused by Judas. He was accused by Judas. You can also read that in Mark 14, verses 1 to 11, as also in Matthew 26, verses 1 to 13, where it says, and it, it came to pass when Jesus had finished all these sayings, Pagkatapos all of it discourse, he said unto his disciples, Ye know that after two days is the feast of the Passover, and the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. So, magikita nyo, di ba? Nyo magikita rito, that was already Monday, but ang sabi niya, after two days is the feast of the Passover, and the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. Okay. Then fifthly, we have Tuesday. And that is April 13. Okay. Now, we are, we are talking about real hours, real time. Real time, huh? 
that happened when the Lord Jesus Christ actually died. Real time ito. The Passover was made ready in Mark 14, 12 to 16. Judas went to the chief priest in Matthew 26, 14 to 16. That was Tuesday. Then sixthly, Wednesday, 14th Nisan. Ano ginawa ng Panginoon dyan? Jesus ate with the disciples the Passover meal, instituted the Lord's Supper. You find in Matthew, Mark 14, 17 to 25, Matthew 26, 20 to 29. You would notice in Mark 14, and in the evening, he cometh with the 12th in the evening. That was Wednesday evening. Okay? Now please take note that the time, the day in the Hebrew calendar starts at 6 o'clock in the evening. Julian calendar, the day starts 12 midnight. In the Hebrew calendar, the day starts 6 in the evening. Okay. He went up to the Mount of Olives and went to the garden to pray. He was betrayed by Judas. He was arrested. He was denied by Peter three times. He faced a mock trial before Pontius Pilate. All this mock trial happened within 24 hours. Less than 24 hours. Now, it was illegal for the Jews, even the Romans, to hold a trial after office hours. But they did the trial. They did the trial in the evening. Oh, Kasi, ang kinakatakutan ng mga Hudyo, baka yung mga loyal sa Panginoong Yesu Cristo, magrali. Kaya sinasabi ko sa inyo, this was a political decision. The death of Christ was a political decision. Oh, ang kinakabahan nila, baka magrali yung mga disciples ng Panginoon sapagat maraming nabautismuan si John the Baptist at ano man nangyayari? Mapospon. Madelay. Mapigilan ang kamatayan ng ating Panginoon. Pero of course, alam natin, alam natin in prophecy, it cannot happen because it has been prophesied. And every prophecy will be what? Fulfilled. Makikita nyo sa Matthew 26, 30 to 75. All right. Mark 15, verses 1 to 24. Makikita nyo lahat ang mga yan. Then, what happened? What happened? That Wednesday, the Lord Jesus Christ was crucified at 9 in the morning, which was, the Bible says, the third hour of the day. The third hour of the day. Died at 3 in the afternoon, the ninth hour of the day. So, makikita ninyo, makikita ninyo, he was on the cross for about what? Six hours. Mula uh, 9 in the morning. 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3. Six hours. He was on the cross. Six or seven hours, he was on the cross. Lahat na mga seven statements that the Lord Jesus Christ said. It was said within those more than six hours on the cross. Now, my wife showed me something about a doctor making a research on the sufferings of Christ. Alam nyo ba kung bakit ang death penalty on the cross is the most cruel capital punishment? Sapagkat sa cross, kapag ikaw ay pinako sa cross, ang intensyon ng mga Romano ay hindi ka mamatay agad. Naunawa nyo ba? 
The death penalty on the cross, the intention of the Romans is for you to suffer for a while, not for you to die instantly, like lethal injection, like the guillotine, like uh, the electric chair, okay? That's why the cross is the most cruel capital punishment because what the Romans intend to do is what? For you to stand the cross for days, for days, not hours, to suffer. Alam niyo bakit? Sapagkat ang mga Romans, mga statistic yan. Do you realize that? Alam niyo kung bakit itinayo ang Rome, ang, ang, ang Coliseum sa Rome? Because of the gladiator games. Yun ang pinaka-games nila. Yun ang gusto nila na bakit tayo, ang gusto natin, sabong. Ang gusto natin, kabayo. Ha? Ang gusto natin, karera ng mga aso. Okay. Pero ang mga hudyo, gladiator ito. Oo. Nagpapatayan. Spartacus, for example, is a real person. Oo. Magaling yan. Yan ang pinapalakpakan ng mga Romans tong araw. The Roman people were sadistic people. They want violence. They are thrilled to be able to see others suffer. Kaya nga yung death penalty cross of Calvary, hindi lang yung kaagad mamamatay ang tao sa krus. Nais nila na makita muna yung agony, makita yung paghihirap, makita yung struggle. Nanonawaan niyo ba ako? At pinapanood yan ng libu-libong mga Romano at natritri sila habang nakikita nila na nag struggle Just imagine, nag struggle yung tao ron sa cross. You know what I'm saying? But you take note, it only took about six hours that Christ suffered and He died. To the rest of the Romans, to them that was, you know, very unlikely. Huh? They were frustrated. But I'm bilis. You know? And you would notice, you would notice, yung preaching kanina ng mga preacher dito natin, nakikita ninyo that every word he says, every statement he said, it was in a loud voice. It was not as if he has been weakened. You know what I'm saying? Hindi ba yung, yung sabi ng Panginoon, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Hindi niya sinabing, my God, my God. No, he was saying, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? When he said, it is finished, it is finished, he cried with a loud voice. When finally he died, he cried with a loud voice. Father, to thee, I commend my spirit. He was crying with a loud voice. It means he was still that strong. Kaya, yung mga Romano, kaya may centurion dun eh. Nung naman niyo ba ako? May centurion, Roman centurion. Pinapanood ang Panginoong Heso Kristo. Pinapanood niya. Walang struggle. In fact, doon lamang sa trial, hindi sumasagot ang Panginoon. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah 53, He never opened His mouth. Sinampal siya, alright, tinanggal yung kanyang beard, pinutungan siya ng koronang tinik, lahat ginawa sa kanya, He never opened His mouth. Pinalo siya, ni hindi siya umaaray, ni hindi siya umiiyak. He did that without any struggle at all. Ibig sabihin, he endured the suffering, every suffering, without showing any struggle to the Roman people. See? I'd like you to look at that. In that vein, akala nila, makikita nila ang Panginoong Kristo, manginginig doon sa krus eh. Manginginig at mag struggle at gustong-gustong mabuhay. No? Never did that. 
Now look, that Wednesday afternoon, he died a tree, his body was taken down from the cross, and he was buried before the evening of the same day. Back it, back it. Because six o'clock ng gabi, ha? Six o'clock ng gabi. High Sabbath na yan. Magta-Thursday na. Alam niyo ba yan? Ha? Pag Sabbat, hindi humahawak ng patay ang mga Hudyo. Hindi nagpuputa ng libingan ang mga Hudyo. Kaya kinakailangan, ilibing kagad yung tao before the Sabbath day. Why? Sapagkat hindi sila humihipo ng bangkay pag Sabbath. So the Lord Jesus Christ was taken down from the cross. He was buried before the high Sabbath, which the Jews called the preparation in Mark 15, verses 25 to 30, in Matthew 27, verses 45 to 50, in Luke chapter 23, verses 44 to 46, in Mark 15, verses 42 to 47. Even in Deuteronomy chapter 21 and verse number 23. Binanggit doon. Binanggit doon. Deuteronomy 21, 23 says, His body shall not remain all night upon the tree, but thou shalt in any wise bury him that day, for he that hang is a curse of God that thy land be not defiled, while the Lord thy God giveth thee for inheritance. Then also in John 19, 38 to 42. Thursday, April 15. Bernas niya na, Thursday na yan, 6 o'clock ng gabi, was called the High Sabbath. Jesus' tomb was sealed and guarded by the Roman soldiers. Saturday, 17th Nisan, a regular Sabbath. Our doctrinal stand is this, that Christ arose before the end of the Sabbath day. That was before Sunday. As this was the end of three days and three nights. Bakit ganon? Sapagkat in Matthew chapter 12, verse 40, don't sabi. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. We find it also in Jonah, chapter 1, verse number 17. Ano yun three days and three nights? That is 24 hours. That is 24 hours. Now, Sunday, April 18, Mark 16, 1 to 9. Kalagay. And when the Sabbath was passed, okay, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, had bought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. And very early in the morning, what? The first day of the week. Very early in the morning, the first day of the week. Also in Luke 24, verses 1 to 12, it says, Now, upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning. Linggo na yan. Ano ginagawa pagkatapos? They were there, bring spices to anoint the body of Christ. And that was Sunday. Wala na ang Panginoon doon. So, yung sinasabi ng marami that Christ was raised up on Sunday is not biblically correct. Ito yun. At four o'clock in the morning on Sunday, the Mary, the marriage, Salome and the marriage discovered 
that Christ was no longer there. Naunawa niyo ba? Wala na ang Panginoon doon sa tomb. At discovered nila, wala na. Nakatiklop na. Nakatiklop na. Alright. Malinis na ang tomb. Wala na. Ibig sabihin that Sunday morning, it was not the Lord Jesus Christ that was raised up. That Sunday morning, it was discovered that Christ was no longer there. A discovery. Oh, kaya nga, ginawa nila ang Sunday na ano? Na Resurrection Sunday. You see? But in reality, the Lord Jesus Christ was raised up before that Sunday evening. Okay, meron tayo ditong diagram on that. Ah, nakalagay ba yung diagram dyan para makita nyo yung diagram ng uh, kamatayan. Ah, malinaw ha? First day, second day, third day. Death, a little over three o'clock. First day, 24 hours. Look at that. Now, in rabbinical thinking, the hour is calculated by taking the total time of daylight from sunrise until sunset of a particular day and dividing it into 12 equal parts. That is called Ja'a Zemanit or a proportional hour. Now, paano mo i-explain yung ninth hour? Yung six hour? Bakit hindi three o'clock? Bakit hindi six o'clock? Bakit hindi nine o'clock? Ito yan. Since the duration of daylight varies according to seasons of the year, a proportionate hour will therefore vary by season. The sixth hour of the day does not mean 6 o'clock a.m. or even six-minute hour after sunrise. But it's the sixth proportionate hour of the 12 hours that are counted for the day in question. Huwag ko nang ituloy. Hindi nyo maintindihan eh. <laughs> Kahit na ituloy ko, hindi nyo pa maintindihan, di ba? Oo. So, kinakailangan, maunumahan natin yung rabbinical uh, hour na tinatawag, no? Kaya ninth hour. Kaya, six hour. Kasi dinidivide dyan in 24 hours ng 12 according to seasons of the day. Alright. Now, let us now go to uh, the, the greatest words ever is spoken on earth. Ito ay dineliver kanina ng ating mga speaker. Atin i-review. Okay? The greatest words ever spoken on earth. These are the greatest words. The greatest words ever spoken by a dying man. By a dying man. Okay? Ano yung first? Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And ang una, di ba? Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. So, ibig sabihin ito, ganito. The Lord Jesus Christ is spoke forgiveness to those who nailed Him to the cross. Now, look at that kind of love, isn't it? 
Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. You know why the Lord Jesus Christ said, for they know not what they do? Because Christ was referring to prophecy. Ibig sabihin, mangyayari yun eh. No, 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 Mangyayari. That was prophesied already. Kaya sinasabi niya, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. They didn't know that this had to happen. I have to die so that I can become Savior. If God will not become man, ito ha, if God will not become man, we will not have a Savior. Naunawaan niyo ba ako? Oo. Kung ang Diyos hindi magiging tao, wala tayong tagapagligtas. Kinaka- kinakailangan ang Diyos maging tao para magkaroon tayo ng tagapagligtas para siya mamatay para sa ating mga kasalanan. Hello? Kaya, you know, uh, God cannot save us if He did not become a man. Naunawahan niyo ba? He had to become a man. Ayan. Oh. So the Lord Jesus Christ he spoke forgiveness to those who had nailed him to the cross, signifying that he is the great intercessor and that there is forgiveness of sins through him alone. Through him alone. Therefore, dito sa first saying of the cross. Huh? He was in the position as a great intercessor. He interceded for us before the Father. No, 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 All right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, the second saying. And sabi, Truly I say unto you, today you will be with me in paradise. Of course, you know that already. The Lord Jesus Christ he spoke salvation to the penitent thief. Jesus promises the same assurance with us today. Today, thou shalt be with me in paradise. Kaya ang tanong, ano ang ginawa? Ano ang ginawa ng thief to go to paradise? To go to heaven. Nothing. Nothing but put his faith upon the Lord Jesus Christ. Nothing. You see? And the Lord, look at his heart. The Lord knew he has the faith to believe. The Lord knew he believed that man believed that he was sinless. The Lord knew that man believed that he was a savior. And because of that, he said, Today, thou shalt be with me in paradise. You see? The third saying, Jesus said to his mother, Woman, this is your son. Then he said to the disciple, This is your mother. The Lord Jesus Christ spoke devotion, love and devotion to and for his mother. And you know what? He told John, John, you take care of of my mother and you make her, you make her your own mother. Mary was left to John's keeping. So, tama, yung sinabi kanina, it does not in any way mean or even suggest mediatorship through Mary. The fourth saying, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The Lord Jesus Christ spoke of severe anguish such as this world has never known. Severe anguish. He really and truly suffered. Sin was laid on Christ. So God must turn away His face from the sin bearer 
Jesus Christ on the cross became our sin bearer and Christ must turn away his face from his own son because that moment he was bearing our sins. But the Bible says in Isaiah 53 verse 11, he shall see about the rebel of his soul and shall be satisfied. The fifth thing, he says, I thirst. When you speak of the word I thirst, it means the Lord Jesus Christ he spoke of his physical suffering on the cross. He suffered as a man to the fullest extent. The sixth thing, when Jesus had received the wine, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and handed over the spirit. The Lord Jesus Christ spoke the greatest and strongest word ever uttered. There, at the last moment, he shouted. He spoke with a loud voice. It is finished. That the last time, it says. In the Hebrew, Christ has completed the work of redemption. At that very moment, if you will look at the scriptures, when Jesus uttered those words, it is finished. At that moment, at that very minute, when Jesus uttered those words, the rent, the bail of the temple was rent in twain. At that moment. Why? Because the work of redemption has been finished. Because there's no more need of any animal sacrifice. Because there's no more need of any Passover. Because Jesus became our Passover. You see, Christ has completed the work of redemption. And then the seventh saying, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Sa mga pelikula na papanood nyo, di ba, na ang Panginoon nasa krus, nagkasalita siya, pahina ng pahina yung boses niya. Tama? Pahina ng pahina yung boses niya. Ah, matay na eh. Pero ito hindi. Ang sabi ng Bible, Jesus cried out in a loud voice na narinig sa buong bundok. Narinig. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. You know what those, these words are? The Lord Jesus Christ he spoke of words of contentment, of peace in his heart, knowing that he had finished his work on earth and he had completely satisfied the heavenly Father. He literally dismissed his spirit and laid down his life. Literally. So I think as John 10, 15, as the Father knoweth me, even so I, so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. Narinig niyo ang ibang mga pastor, siguro nakakamilil ng salita, Sinabi nila, ang Panginoon po ay nagpakamatay sa krus. Hindi ho nagpakamatay ang Panginoon. The Lord did not commit suicide. The Lord Jesus Christ died. Amen? He died. Anong ibig sabihin itong, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Ano ibig sabihin niya? The battle is over. Sabi ko sa inyo, the meaning of the cross is this, that the cross is a battlefield. 
the battle is over. Those words, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. That's why he cried with a loud voice. Do you know why? Because it was a triumphal cry. The battle is over. The battle has been won. The devil has been defeated. Do you know, in the same token, the believer's death is victory. The believer's death is victory. Tang araw, merong isang tao na hinair para ako patayin. At bago niya ako papatayin, pinuntahan niya muna ako. Saan nakakita ng taong pupuntahan ka muna at wawarningan ka? Pinuntahan ako sa pabasin ako niya. Ang araw. Itong building na ito, yung, yung unang building, uh, you were still here, Cora, at the time. Uh, Anya po si Cora, uh, saka si Marie. Chartered members natin yan nung araw. Uh, so 1977, may papatay sa akin. Sabi sa kanya, alam mo, kung papatayin mo ako, akala ko ba, pag, nap- pag napatay mo ako, talo ako. Panalo ako. Sa langit ang punta ko eh. Ikaw, talo ka. Bakit? Kasi pag napatay mo ako, yung mga men namin dito, ahanapin ka at papatayin ka rin. Ikaw, natakot. Hindi ako pinatay. You know? The believer's death is victory. 1 Corinthians 15 verses 54 to 57. 1 Corinthians 15, 54. So when this corruptible shall put on incorruption and this mortal shall be put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where's thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let me just give you the reasons why these words were given. Why? Why do I call this the greatest words? The reasons why these are the greatest words ever given. Number one, because the words were spoken by the greatest person who ever lived. The words were spoken by the greatest person who ever lived. Jesus Christ came for the purpose of atonement for our salvation. Second, the words were, were no, the words made known the greatest announcement ever proclaimed. The words made known the greatest announcement ever proclaimed. And what is that announcement? Jesus paid it all. Jesus paid it all. In 1 Corinthians 1.30 it says, But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom, and righteousness, and sanctification, and redemption. Number three, the reasons why these are the greatest words, because the words concern 
the greatest number of people reaching every mortal since the time of Adam. There is sure salvation for Jews and Gentiles alike. What was finished was not the life of the Savior, but His work of redemption afforded to man. And at that time, also declaring, number one, the end of Judaism. The end of the religion of the Jews. Alala ko, many, many years back, wala pa tayo nung araw, Siete Palabras, kaya ako ay nanonood sa television ng Siete Palabras ng Roman Catholic Church. At merong isang pare, siya ay nagbigay ng kanyang message doon sa It Is Finished. Ito, hindi ko makalimutan to. Tawa ako ng tawa at naawa ako. Ang sabi niya, anong sabi ng Panginoon na nasa krus siya? Natapos na. Anong ibig sabi niya, natapos na? Wala na. Tapos na. Patay na eh. Just imagine. <laughs> Ignorant, isn't it? Huh? Ano yung natapos? The end of the Judaism. The end of the Jewish religion. You know Judaism? The end of the Jewish religion. Anong ginawa ng Roman Catholic Church? Kinuha nila ang Jewish religion, kinuha nila at ibang-ibang reliyon, pinag-join-join yung New Testament at naging Roman Catholic Church. That's why there is the sacrifice of the Mass. That's why there is liturgy. That's why there is sacraments. Oh, that's why there are indulgences. Sapagkat pinaghalo-halo. Mm-hmm. Oh, yun ang ibig sabihin ng Matthew 27:51. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain. The word rent, hindi pinarkila, napunit. Napunit from top to bottom. Yun ang ibig sabihin ng rent. Oo. From top to bottom. Sabi ko nga sa inyo, kapag ang tao pumupunit ng kortina from bottom to up, correct? Oo. Pero Diyos ang pumunit eh. Bakit? Tapagkat mayroong makapal na kortina na nagihiwalay sa holy place doon sa most holy place. Sa templo. Templo ha? Makapal na kortina na nagihiwalay sa holy place and the holy of holies. Doon sa holy of holies, doon ini-sprinkle ang blood sa mercy seat. Ang tawag doon, yung Ark of the Covenant. Ang nasa ibabaw ng Ark of the Covenant, the mercy seat. Pumapasok yung high priest doon sa kortina makapal. Makapal yan. Paano pumapasok ang high priest? Gumagapang siya sa ilalim. Gumagapang sa ilalim. At yung high priest, may tali rito yan. May tali dito. Gumagapang sa ilalim yan. Pagkatapos, hindi sa most holy place at i-sprinkle yung blood sacrifice doon sa mercy seat. At habang ini-sprinkle, sinasabi niya ang kanyang kasalanan at sinasabi niya ang mga kasalanan ng mga hudyo. Yan ang picture ng sacrifice ni Kristo. Alright. Ngayon, sa Leviticus, kapag hindi tinanggap ng Diyos ang animal sacrifice ng high priest, pinapatay siya doon mismo sa most holy place. Papatayin siya ron. The angel will smote him. Patay siya ron. Kapag hindi na yun, kumikilos, ha? may pari sa labas na hawak-hawak yung tali at ginagano'n yung tali, hindi na kumikilos, ihilahin yun palabas. 
Yan ang sacrifice ng araw. Kaya nung ang Panginoon pinako sa cross at sinabi niya, it is finished, at napunit yung makapal na kurtina from top to bottom, ibig sabihin, umukas yan, hindi na kailangan ng pare para sa kasalanan mo. Hindi na kinakailangan mag-offer ang pare ng mas para sa kasalanan mo. Hindi na kinakailangan manik, makinig ka sa pare para pa, ikaw ay magsabi ng kasalanan mo sa pare. Hindi na. Why? Because you can directly go to God and say, Lord, I repent of my sins. Forgive me of all my sins. Direct. Through the high priest called the Lord Jesus Christ. Siya na yung high priest natin. Oh, hindi po ako pare hindi ako mukhang pare. <laughs> hindi rin ako high priest. Hindi ako mukhang high priest. Ha? Artistahin to. <laughs> hindi mukhang pare. Mukha ba akong pare? Hindi po. Si Father John Ramirez <laughs> ang mukhang pare. Hindi ako. Walang pare dito. Pero to ha, look ha. Naniniwala tayo on the priesthood of all believers. Lahat ng mga anak ng Diyos, pare. In one way, bakit? Because we can intercede for somebody else. We can pray to God and intercede for somebody else. It would be another doctrine we can talk about. So therefore, huh? the words concern the greatest number of people reaching every mortal since the time of Adam. The end of Judaism, number two, The end of the old covenant. Of the old covenant. Ano yung old covenant? Hebrews 9, 11 to 15. Tinan ha? Hebrews 9, 11 to 15. Oh, tinan nyo maigi. Ang sanasabi ng Bible. But Christ being come an high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of a heifer is sprinkling the unclean, sanctify it to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Look, kanina binanggit, Christ was the offer and Christ was the offerer. All right? He became the sacrifice. But you know what? He is now the high priest. The work of the high priest is to offer, correct? In heaven, Christ is our high priest. Do you know what Christ did to his own blood? He carried that blood into the mercy seat in heaven and sprinkled that blood once and for all. Once and for all. You see, this doctrine is not always preached many times. The end of the Jaism, the end of the old covenant, And then thirdly, the end of sacrifices. Hebrews 10, 10 to 14. By the which will, we are sanctified to the offering of the body of Jesus Christ. When? How many times? Once for all. Ito, verse 11. And every priest, Jewish priest, He standeth daily, ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which 
can never take away sins. Kaya alam mo, kahit ako nagagalit sa mga salita ni President Digong, sapagkat sa galit niya, sa Katoliko, dinadamay niya ang Biblia. Galit siya sa pare. Dinadamay ang Bible. Pero, pero mamaya, ha, sabihin niya, ha, don't get me wrong, I believe in God. Sabihin niya, di ba? Don't get me wrong, I believe in God. Takot din ako sa karma. Katasabi lang niya eh. Kahapon yata, takot din ako sa karma. Why? Because mahirap paniwalaan na isang taong nag-iisip ang sinasabi ng pari eh. Kaya, kahit na itong si president natin, nadadamay ang Biblia, nadadamay ang Panginoon, may ilang katotohanan sinasabi siya eh. Di ba? Sinabi niya, bakit ako magkukumpisa sa pare? Kailan ko yung pare sa amin nung araw eh. I hope and pray, ako pinapanalangin kong pangawiran natin, na sana talagang makita niya sa Bible ang katotohanan ng ating pinag-uusapan ngayon. The end of sacrifices. Ito napakalinaw, di ba? Oh. Verse 12, But this man, sino yung man? Jesus Christ. After he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God as our high priest now, from henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool, for by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Number four. Ano yung ibig sabihin nung it is finished? The end of what? It is also not only the end of Judaism, the end of the old covenant, the end of sacrifices, but the beginning of a new life in Christ. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Hindi natin pinag-uusapan dito ang Christian sapagkat wala nang identity ang salitang Christian. Kahit sino Christian. Ang pinag-uusapan natin dito, Christ-like. Yan palagi ang sinasabi ko sa mga coordinators natin araw-araw na ikipag usap sa mga tao walang pagkakilala kay Kristo. And so many times, ang nakaka-influensya, hindi kayo, kundi sila. Pag natikit ka na sa mga taong hindi nakakilala sa Panginoon at ang kanilang alam lamang ay lingkwahe ng mundo, nakakalimutan mo, you ought to be Christ-like. Hey! Naunawaan niyo ba ako? Nakakalimutan mo, you ought to be christ Nakakalimutan mo, you ought to have the attitude of Christ in your life. Nakakalimutan mo, na kahit ano pa lingkwahe ng mundong yan, dapat makita ng mga tao na ating pinagilingkuran na meron tayong Kristo sa ating buhay. Iba yun eh. Iba yun. Testimony yun. Huwag na yung testimony ko. Huwag na yung testimony na ikasiya. Yun na lang testimony ng Panginoon sa buhay mo. Pag nandito ka, parang ikaw ay Christ-like. Pag nasa labas ka na, ang kasama mo, 
mga kabarkada mo, wala ka ng Christ-likeness. Wala ka ng pinakaiba. Tama ba ako mali? Tanong, nakikita pa ba ang pagiging Christ-like mo? Pagkasama mo ang mga tao na wala alam na lingwahe kundi lingwahe ng mundo. Hindi lang ang salita sa fashion, sa pera, sa pleasure, sa leisure, sa lahat ng bagay. Akala niyo ba salita lang to? Hindi. Sa lahat ng bagay. Sa iyong attitude sa kapwa. Or we are no different from Judas that daily we betray Jesus Christ to our friends. Madaling, alam mo, madaling sabihin yung salitang Christian. I'm a Christian. Anybody can say that. Am I right? Anyone. In fact, almost everyone say that. Ako, I always want to look at myself every day. And whenever I would talk to people, I do not want them to see me as a politician. I want them to see me as a child of God. When I would give out money to the sick, when I would give out solicitation to those that need it, I'm giving it out not because I'm running. I'm giving it out because I am a child of God. How about you? How about you? Alam mo ngayon, bakasyon, ang mga politiko, hindi, hindi mo makokontak yan. Ako, kinokontak pa ako. Eh. Sumasagot pa ako. Mayroon tayong chairman Nag-text sa akin. May namatay na bata doon sa kanyang barangay. Bakasyon ngayon, ha? Sabi sa akin, kung nag request po yung nanay kung pwedeng kayong mabigay ng ataol. Aba, kung ako politiko, magagalit ako, eh. Bibigay ako ng ataol? Bata eh. Diba? Alam mo, sinagot ko yun. Titinan ko magagawa ko. I'm so glad they called the funeral home na nagipagkontrata sa akin na pag ako nanalo, sila ang bibigyan ko ng burial assistant. I called up St. Mark. Oh, kayo na ang funeral na gagamitin ko, ha? Pagbigyan nyo na ako dito. Bigyan nyo siya ng ataol. Binigyan ng ataol yan libre. Ang babayaran lamang nung mag-anak, yung lugar ng paglilibingan. Palagay nyo kaya ang politiko, makukontak pa ngayon. Ito pa nagtetext sa akin, kailangan yung masakyan. And I answered them. I answered them not as a politician. I answered them as a servant of God. Why? Because to me, that is a solemn and a sacred duty. Not just mere public service. 
ikaw. Palagay mo. Kailan ko sabihin mo, ang bira bakasyon na eh. Hindi ka malang mabaka, magbaka, mag, makapagbakasyon. No. There's no vacation when it comes to helping people. There's no vacation when it comes to reaching out to others. There's no vacation when it comes to winning souls for Jesus Christ. There's no vacation when it comes to worshiping God. Sinasabi ko yan sa ating mga members abroad. Meron tayo dito ngayon. Ha? Sinasabi ko sa ating mga members abroad. Pag ako nagpupunta sa mga congregation natin, sa UAE, sa Qatar, sa Kuwait, sa Singapore, kay saan, sinasabi ko, alam mo ang hirap sa inyo, kapag kayo nagbakasyon sa Pilipinas, pati church, nagbabakasyon kayo. Pati soul winning, nagbabakasyon kayo. Pati reaching out to others, nagbabakasyon kayo. Ako, when I go to any place, whether it be Europe or anywhere else, ang unang hinahanap ko, saan ako mag attend na church. Pag wala ako makitang church, doon sa hotel room ko, kakaroon kami ng service. Na alam mo, Wilson, noon doon ka sa Switzerland, wala tayong makitang church. Tinawag ko si Wilson when he was taking his master's degree. Magkaroon tayo ng service at linggo sa hotel room ko. Tinawag ko si Ralph and Rowena uh, Adorable from Belgium. They traveled three hours upang magkaroon kami ng worship time sa hotel room ko. Why? Because when it comes to serving God, you don't go on vacation! It's 24-7. You are a child of God 24-7. And therefore, you're a soldier of Christ 24-7. And therefore, you're a servant of God 24-7. And therefore, you should be helping people 24-7. Paano ka nakakalimot tayo, di ba? Kaya ang iba, hindi, hindi magpapaalam sa akin yan. Alis na lang. Nakita niyo ba ang pastor niyo nagbakasyon? In my 40, 40, 50 years of being a, a preacher, being a pastor, have you seen me go on vacation as far as helping people is concerned? No. Kahit nasa abroad ako, sinasagot ko, ang mga constituent ko rito kung may kailangan. Inuutusan ko ang mga preachers natin. Gawin mo to. Why? Because to me, like Christ, serving God is a 24-7 affair. Eh, pasto, paano yan? Hindi kami babakasyon. Ang bakasyon ko, Langit. Naunawa niyo ba ako? Eh, pastor, walang ano doon eh. Walang beach resort tulad ng Barakay. Huwag ka na pumunta ng langit. Dito ka na lang. Eh, ang hirap ng iba sa inyo. Kayo mga young professionals. Terrible Imbitahan ka ng boss mo na, wak, na, na to be out there, magbakasyon o mag, sa resort on Sunday, uunahin mo yan, ni wala kang, hey, magkinig ka sa akin! Ni wala ka man lang will sa puso mo, boss, hindi pwede. I have to be in church. Pasa ba, mawag talagang trabaho? Ba't, sino ba nabibigyan ng trabaho sa'yo? Boss mo o Panginoon? Some of you, 
Young professionals, you're weak and you're worldly. You know what that happens? I don't even give time to pray for you. I leave you alone in what you will do. When you do not make Jesus Christ so important, and what is important to you is what you want to do, then you ought to be alone. Sabi ng Panginoon sa Israel, Ephraim has gone to idols. Let him alone. I would care for those who do not know God. And they don't care about God because they don't, they don't know God. Do you know that? But I would not care for those who know God but don't care for God. You think you're successful? Watch my mouth. You're going to fail. It's just a matter of time. Too quiet. Sabi nga ng Bible, sabi ni Apostle Paul, are you angry at me because I speak the truth? We have a young lady who used to be a staff in Mika who quit. came to me and said she will take care of her mother. And after one year, she applied for a job abroad, taken in. And after that, she got married to a man who's not saved and got saved only afterwards. She was overheard saying, I will prove that I'll be successful out of this church. Her husband just died. How old was he? How old was he? Huh? 39 years old. And he used to teach in one of our churches. And that lady even did not tell the pastor that she came from this church. Did she become successful after that when she left this place? No. She just lived in a tiny room. Listen, members, don't try me. Because if I come to you and I tell you I'm not praying for you anymore, that's it. We are not going to make the work of God and Jesus Christ less important in your life to make the world more important. and receive all the blessings that this church should have. The question is, prove me wrong.
You think I am running for an office to have the power and the money? No. All of you know that I do not need the money of the government. And all of you know I do not need governmental power because I have the power of God in my life already. And that's more than enough for me. My only request from you is this. Because I cannot demand from you. I cannot force you to do anything. No, I cannot. I can just preach to you. I can just advise you. I can just warn you. If you listen, great. You don't listen, your choice. I hope that what you heard throughout this day will make you to realize the sufferings and sacrifice Jesus Christ did for you. And you cannot sacrifice more than what Jesus did. Some of you do not even know what sacrifice means. Because you think that to be a believer in Jesus Christ is just to enjoy life. No. Even Moses said in Hebrews 11, esteeming the reproach of Christ, greater riches than the treasures of Egypt. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Go ahead. You want to enjoy the world? Go there. Enjoy it. See what happens next time. If nothing happens to you, it means you have never been a child of God. Why? Because a true child of God will get the chastening of God. To warn us. To let us realize who we are. That's why all of these things is the beginning of a new life in Christ. Do you have that new life? Are you living that new life? Do you share that new life? Do others know that you have that new life? Fourthly, why do I believe to be the greatest words? Because they announce the greatest victory ever won. They announce the greatest victory ever won. I told you that when Jesus died and when Jesus said it is finished and when Jesus said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. It means this, the battle is over. It was a triumphal cry. The battle has been won. Satan, the Lord's greatest enemy, tried to prevent the Lord Jesus from shedding his blood since the very beginning of the human race. Since the book of Genesis until today, I told you in a Thompson Bible, there is a message on the, uh, the scarlet thread of redemption. Read that. It will teach you something you have never learned before. From the, like for example, in Genesis, the curse and the fall of man. The death of Abel, the promised seed. The union of righteous people with ungodly men. The death of the firstborn during Christ's birth. The temptation of the Lord Jesus Christ. In all these things, Satan failed. Satan failed. It only means that no one can ever thwart or frustrate God's purpose. 
that the Lord Jesus Christ died for us to live for Him. He died for us that we might live and live for Him. Not only to live eternally in heaven, but live for Him. That He finished the work of salvation. Because we can neither finish nor even start it. And that Christ has done all these things because he loved us. Now look, if you believe in all of these things, if you have truly understood all of the seven sayings on the cross, and if you truly believe that when Christ died, when Christ rose from the grave, he was victorious. He was triumphant. The battle is over. Do you know what the challenge of Apostle Paul was? In 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Looking at all this. Looking at the fact that we are victorious. Looking at the fact as we read again. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 54 where it says, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Verse 56, the sting of death is sin. And the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Is that the end of it? No. There's verse 58, where Paul said, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Are we steadfast? Are we unmovable? Are we always abounding in the work of God? Or you're the most inconsistent child of God in this crowd tonight. There's judgment someday. Kahit si Isko Moreno, naniniwala sa judgment. Naniniwala sa paghuhukom, eh. di ba? Darating ang paghuhukom. Siyempre, election yun. Pero look, mayroong paghuhukom pagkatapos ang buhay na ito. Maniwala ka sa hindi. Meron ba Meron. Ang napag-uhukom, nakalagay doon. Sa 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. Tulad niyo may ikin. Ha? Baka nakakalimutan niyo. Ano nakalagay? Sa 2 Corinthians 5, verse number 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Sino yung we? Yung manak ng Diyos. Di ba? Yung mga saved. Kung hindi ka saved, exempted ka dyan. O, wala, walang problema, exempted ka. Doon ka sa great white throne. Ano yung judgment na yan? That everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that 
he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Shall we stand? Every head be bowed, every eye be closed. I'm not going to give any invitation tonight. I want you to think it over. Search your heart. Tonight, tomorrow, Sunday. I'm not going to give you the benefit of coming to Christ, praying, and after that, the same old thing. No, I won't. But just think tonight. What have you learned from the seven sayings of Christ on the cross? What have you learned? What have you committed to him? What decision have you made? What kind of commitment do you have for Jesus Christ? What kind of dedication do you have for him today? Do you think that the so-called Christian life on earth is just enjoyment and convenience and comfort? Or there is sacrifice. There is suffering. Or there is a choice to be made like Moses. Esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures of Egypt. between you and God. Heavenly Father, thank you for what we have learned today. Lord, I pray that these are not just words that we will take and forget afterwards. But Lord, these are not the words of men. These are your words, your holy words. Oh God, search our hearts. Help us to know who we are. And help us to know who you are in our lives. For this I pray in Jesus' name and for his sake alone. Amen.